a space photo recommendation from someone who's spent a lot of time there. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Colonel Terry Verds, U.S. Air Force test pilot, astronaut, and ISS commander for Expedition 43, speaker, author, consultant, and owner of 39A Productions. Welcome, Terry. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. In addition to the resume I mentioned in the introduction, you're also a photographer. What subjects do you enjoy photographing most? Well, now that I'm on Earth, um, nature. I love, you know, animals and mountains and anything having to do with nature. I was just out taking some pictures of birds. I live on a lake in Texas, and uh, it's like the middle of, it's like the bird highway from north to south every spring and, and fall. So there's a bunch of birds out there. What are some of the challenges in viewing and photographing Earth's night sky from the ground? Right. So astrophotography is probably what I'm most known for. And the, the big thing is you can't just turn the camera on green. You can't just set it on easy mode, auto mode, because the light brightness during the day and darkness at night is so extreme. So, you know, these cameras are amazing. You know, iPhones and the, I, I got the new 12. It's an amazing camera. But in space, you have to know the manual settings. Um, and so if, if you're doing city lights at night or auroras at night or daylight, you know, there's just a few settings that you need to know, apertures that you want a, a closed aperture so you get a good depth of field. Um, sometimes you just need to do a manual exposure because the computer can't figure out that black is so dark and that's the brightest earth I've ever seen. And so you, you just need to have these manual exposures in your brain because you're going over 17,000 miles an hour. So if you see something and you have to get the checklist out and what setting do I use, it's gone. You know, so you just have to know what you're doing. And I ended up taking over 300,000 pictures. Um, there's some poor guy here at the Johnson Space Center that whose job it is to count. And I think they were very happy when I landed. I ended up taking more pictures than anybody ever on a space mission. Um, in fact, my first book, is View From Above, was about my space photography. So it's, it's definitely a passion of mine. Let's talk about like from the earth. Like, so you, you've obviously got an advantage. This, a lot of us would just dream to have, but from the right. earth, many of us want to take, you know, photographs of things like, I don't know, maybe the moon or, or planets. Mm -hmm. So some objects like the moon and planets favor one type of telescope, deep sky objects like galaxies and nebula favor others. What right. are some of the best solutions you've seen to capture both? Well, there's two basic types. There's refractors and reflectors. Refractors use glass to bend light and reflectors use mirror to bend the light. And the glass is very heavy. I had a five inch refractor for years here. So, and, the, and they're good for the moon and planets. They give you a good zoom in. And if that's what you wanna look at, refractors are good. They're just really heavy. My, it was like 75 pounds. So it was really cool to drag it out on the first night or two. Um, and, and it's like, wow, there's the rings of Saturn. But then you don't ever wanna drag it out again because it's such a big thing. It's so clunky, it takes up all this room in your house. Um, but for deep sky objects, you need uh, cameras. You can see the Orion Nebula and the M31 Andromeda Galaxy, but they're just dim, fuzzy, gray patches. You can't really tell anything with your eye because you need a long duration exposure to get all the detail. So I'm working with this company called Valonis now. They have a telescope called Stellina. It's amazing. It's like, I call it the iPhone of telescopes. Um, Stellina is a big one. It's about 20 pounds. You set it up, it tracks the objects automatically. It sends the image to your iPhone. So you don't look through an eyepiece. It sends the image to the iPhone. And it'll take 10 second images and stack them on top of each other. So many deep sky objects need 15 minutes or 30 minutes or 45 minutes of, of photography. So if you had a normal telescope, you would have to be doing all this manually. It would be a big 90 pound contraption. You'd have to set up the camera and everything. Stellina is literally everything is, you don't do anything. You just power it on and go on the app and tell it what to look for. And um, I just got it like a month ago. It's amazing. And you can see uh, galaxies and nebula. It's, it's really a cool technology and it does that image stacking. So it, the first picture is dim and then it gets brighter and then brighter. And then after 30 minutes, you have this beautiful picture of a nebula. There was a movie in the eighties. I think it was called No Way Out when they like the CIA had this technology 
and you could see the image building over time and they finally figured out who the bad guy was. It's kind of like that, only it's all automatic. Field rotation is an issue when using alt azimuth mounts for long exposure photography. Right. How can image processing software compensate for this? That's a great question. So there's basically two types of telescopic mounts. Equatorial, which you basically um, rotate the mount to be parallel with the equator. So the earth rotates, you know, around in the equator. And that way the telescope moves, it only has to move in one direction. It only has to move one axis to compensate for the earth's rotation. A normal Altaz mount is just up, down, left, and right. And only that's not in the same axis as the equator, unless you're on the equator or at the North Pole. Um, it, otherwise, you have to what's called derotate because as the Earth moves and the stars move, um, they're going to make a circle in the image. And so the Vespera, the new telescope they have, Vespera is a small one. It's only about 10 pounds. It fits in a backpack. And Stellina is a little bit bigger. It's about 20 some plus pounds. But those derotate automatically with software. So it knows where you are. It knows your elevation. It knows what the rotation is going to look like. And it kind of electronically rotates the image um, to prevent that, that rotation. If you had a manual telescope in the old days with film, you would have to do all that manually and, and get a really, really precise alignment of your telescope. Now the computer does that for you. What's the experience using the Vespera? Was it pretty easy? Yeah, well, the Vespera, they haven't built it yet. So the, I've used a Stellina. Stellina is like the big brother. It's like Tesla. You know, they, the model, they had the Model S first and now the Model 3 is coming out. So Stellina is the Model S of tel, the, tel, the observation station, they call it the telescope. And the Vespera is going to be the Model 3. It comes out next year. But it's amazingly easy. You literally put, put it on the mount. It has a little one foot tall tripod. You have to screw that on. You have to charge the battery and plug in the battery and then you power it on. And then on your iPhone, you have to click the Wi-Fi link to the telescope. So you, you know, not your home Wi-Fi network, you do Wi-Fi to the telescope. And then you open up the app and it gives you a bunch of different nebulas and galaxies and planets and you just pick what you want to observe. So I didn't read a manual or anything. I, I got it in a box. I took it outside and 15 minutes later, I had a picture of uh, M13, this cluster of stars. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Colonel Terry Virts, U.S. Air Force test pilot, astronaut, and ISS commander for Expedition 43, speaker, author, consultant, and owner of 39A Productions. Thanks for joining us, Terry. And um, if somebody wants to maybe find out more of your uh, astrophotography or just connect with you, how can they do that? Uh, thanks for having me. And I'm on Twitter, Astro Terry, or Instagram, Astro underscore Terry. There should be a link on there for the, um, for the telescopes. You can click on the link if you want, if you're interested in astrophotography. Or on my website, terryvirch.com, there's some of my photography on there. And I've got, um, this, like I said, a book, View From Above, and the new book, How to Astronaut. So I've got a, a couple of books about uh, being in space. And they've had a pretty great Kickstarter. Uh, it looks like that's still going on right now, but um, they've far surpassed their goals. So we're excited to it, see that. It's amazing. The Kickstarters, you're always a little skeptical about, and they, they're at least 50% more than what they wanted. They, they've raised way beyond a million dollars, which is, which is pretty amazing. But it's, I mean, it's, it's an amazing device. It's really cool, and I'm excited about it. I think because people can actually feel astrophotography and to – get an old school telescope and set up the camera systems is painful. You have to be an expert. It's expensive. And they've done, they've taken all of that admin overhead out of the process. And you can just look at nebula that are 4,000 light years away. And, and, you know, that's a really emotional experience. You can, everybody can gather around the iPad. Multiple people can be controlling it. It's a really cool system they have to bring astronomy to normal people. Another reason to look forward to 2021, right? <laughs> yes. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alika. Thanks again, Terry. Thanks for having me. And find more of my interviews right here or on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube or 
at tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.